fuck. The fucking shit, motherfucker. <sighs> I can't English today. Perché, signore? <laughs> Hello everyone, Adrienne here. So today I'm going to be doing a review of a couple of albums by Beauty and Chaos. These were very generously sent to me by Michael Ciravolo. I'm not sure if that's the an Italian pronunciation or Spanish pronunciation, but he was very generous to send this to me and he did sign the newest one on the back for me, so thank you so very much, Michael. I really appreciate it. So Beauty and Chaos was founded by Michael Soravolo, who is also the creator of Schecter Guitars. In listening to all of the music featured here, I noticed there is such attention to detail and desire to produce multi-dimensional music featuring many legends of alternative music. So quite a few goth musicians on there as well, of course. I was first introduced to them via Ashton Knight. I'm so thankful that I've connected with so many incredible musicians in friendship over the past year or so, and I'm so pleased to share their work with all of you. I noticed that Ashton was tweeting and posting on Instagram about his collaboration with Beauty and Chaos last album, and I was immediately intrigued by it. One of Ashton's contribution to the album, Storm, <laughs> was so captivating and intense, it was positively irresistible. Not only that, the music video for it was just beautiful. It was beautiful. I had been meaning to listen to the entire album, but I kind of forgot about it. Sorry, shame on me. <laughs> Until I saw both Beauty and Chaos and Ashton Knight posting about the acoustic version of Storm on their social media as part of an upcoming album of remixes from some of the original material. So when I asked you guys on social media if you'd be interested in me talking about Beauty and Chaos in my upcoming videos on new goth music, you overwhelmingly said, fuck yeah. So here I am. By the way, if you haven't yet, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter so you can interact a little more with me and get to look at my day-to-day -day life as well as participating in the polls that I run in regard to my content as well as Q&As. So because of that post, Michael Saravalo graciously reached out to me and asked me if he could send me Beauty Re-Envisioned to review on my channel and he asked if I had the first album, which was Finding Beauty in Chaos. So I had no choice but to accept his incredibly generous offer. Needless to say, I was pretty pumped to finally sit down and listen to the treasures that were waiting for me on Finding Beauty in Chaos, as well as what was waiting for me on Beauty Re-Envisioned. I was just so excited. It's a mass diverse collaboration featuring lots of legendary goth and other alternative musicians with the likes of Robin Zander of Cheap Trick, Wayne Hussey of The Mission, Simon Gallup of The Cure, Al Jorgensen of Ministry, Evie Vine, Michael Aston of Jean Loves Jezebel, Ashton Knight of The Awakening, of course, and of course, many others. So let's get into the songs on the first release, Finding Beauty in Chaos. So the first piece on here is The Road to Rosario, and Michael Aston here has a really nice tenor voice in the opening piece, really nice steady vibrato, and leaning a little bit toward a post-punk style of singing, like a better Peter Murphy. The instrumentation is a little bit more rocky and post-punk sounding than I typically listen to, but that really didn't stop me from loving it. It was very forward on the guitars and drums, but it had enough sort of symphonic and synthesized undertones to keep me interested and to give it depth. That depth is typically what I find lacking kind of in post-punk music typically, but obviously this is an exception. It's very melodic and melancholy, and it was a very pleasant surprise. Lyrically, the song is very forlorn, yet it speaks of a longing for something or someone better. The sensitivity and expressiveness in Michael Aston's voice was a really beautiful feature that really added to it. The second track is Storm. 
and this was featuring Ash Knight of The Awakening. So the song starts out with the sound of a distorted cello. I know what you're thinking, but dude, I play the cello, I know what it sounds like, I know it when I hear it, okay? <laughs> It gives the song so much depth and a really interesting atmospheric touch. Then the bass and the guitar make a very fluid entrance before building. Hell, the guitars almost float gracefully over the drum beats. It swells to a heavy intensity for the chorus and the bridge is incredibly melodic and slightly distorted and dissonant. So I was finding that incredibly intriguing. I'm a freak and I think there are certain times when dissonance can sound really, really sexy. There are uh, certain composers that I love that use that very strategically and very, very well. <sighs> and of course, Ashton Knight's voice is devastatingly beautiful and expressive as always, and suits the song perfectly. The lyrics were again feeling slightly desolate, uh, speaking of the past, letting it go, and even in the hardest of times, there's always a light to guide you. I don't know what it is, but this song feels really 90s. I can't really put my finger on it though. So the next song that we are dealing with is Man of Faith, and this is featuring Wayne Hussey and Simon Gallup. So this starts out with distorted acoustic guitar, then transitions quite smoothly into electric guitars and drums. Again, there's a soft symphonic touch to this which balances out the rock elements very, very well. This time, it takes the form of a synthesized choir, and that was incredibly surprising, yet it totally fit the theme of the lyrics, and that just filled my little dark heart with joy. Yeah. In the bridge, it once again becomes very atmospheric, melodic, and melancholy, and gets very soft in comparison to the rest of the song. The whispering voices are a really nice touch. Wayne Hussey's voice, of course, is iconic, and I love pretty much anything he touches, as far as music is concerned. I was pleasantly surprised to hear Ashen contribute additional backing vocals along with Johnny Indovina. There was so much depth to this one, so many layers and layers of music to dissect and just drown in. Lyrically, this delves into the proclaiming of the hypocrisy of religion, which is something I can definitely get behind. And number four is 20th Century Boy featuring Al Jorgensen. This one is very heavy, like kind of bordering on hard rock and even metal sounding. Very rough vocals, big electric guitars, very aggressive drums. The synthesizer again adds the complexity that previous tracks on this album have had. And that seems to be the signature for this album and for Beauty in Chaos at this point. Again, this one sounds super 90s, but I'm totally not complaining about that. As a 90s kid myself, I do like looking back on that decade fondly. And the layered voices in here make this one super fun. The lyrics here very much speak of the 20th century, duh, and kind of has an edgy romantic undertone. Number five is Drifting Away featuring Robin Sander, and this one calms down after the very aggressive and thrashy previous track. Again, I really love the variety and the diversity this album offers. This one sounds a bit more along the lines of 90s goth rock. Robin Zander's vocals are very fitting for the sound of this particular song, again, more in sort of post-punk kind of style, but I'm not put off by it at all. Not at all. As with the first song, it's very melancholy and very expressive. Overall, I really like how sadly romantic and longing this one is. Everything here is just pleasantly surprising. The more I hear of this album, the more it feels like a tribute to 90s alternative music, which again, I'm okay with. I'm totally okay with that. The next one is Memory of Love by Johnny Indovina, and the guitars that open up the song has a really distinctive Spanish guitar kind of vibe, which makes it kind of exotic. It was, it was cool. I really like that. I really love how many beautiful layers of guitars there are in this, and I like it a lot. <laughs> and I like Johnny Indovina's lovely, soft, rich voice, and I find it quite poignant. The synth pads in this one add more depth, and it almost has a kind of glass harmonica sort of vibe to it, 
It's so weird, but that occurred in the bridge of this song. This one really touches on something I think all of us can relate to, uh, leaving behind an old love and looking forward to new love. This next one, number seven, is Look Up, and this is featuring Tish Soravalo. Soravalo? Soravalo? I'm sorry. <laughs> this one started out very unusually. The count-off beat that we sometimes hear in rock songs was done with very staccato strokes of an electric guitar. That was certainly different, but I liked it. It's a really nice change to hear Tish's voice on this one, as this far she's the only lead female vocal that we hear. The effects on her voice makes it super atmospheric, and the guitars definitely float over the quick rocky drum beat that we have here. It kind of reminds me of some ethereal music from the 90s that I really love. It actually reminds me a lot, kind of like a heavier version of This Ascension, which again, I'm okay with. <laughs> if I were to describe this one, it's dreamy. The fact that the lyrics speak so much of nostalgia and following one's dreams for a better life justifies the dreamy ethereal quality of the song. This one is definitely heavier on the synthesizers than the previous songs, which really contribute to the dreamy quality of both the song and Tish's voice. The next one is Unnatural Disaster featuring Doug Pinnock and Ice-T. When I saw who was behind this one, I didn't know what to expect. It's more electronic and industrial and metal sounding than I was really expecting. It's heavy and catchy, uh, Doug Pinnock's voice is rich and very expressive, the synthesizer's droning in the background adds some more intrigue. This is aggressive and it matches the tone of the song. It speaks of absolute chaos. This seems to be dedicated to the victims of Hurricane Harvey, or at the very least making references to it. The rap by Ice-T in the bridge section was super interesting. It was a nice and surprising change up and I think it really adds to the feeling of complete chaos in this one. It's pretty great. Yay, another piece with Wayne Hussey. Damn it. I keep saying peace like I'm still talking about classical music. Fuck. This is what years of operatic training will do to you. This one is a nice, mellow calm down after the complete discord that we had in the previous track. It has really nice, melodic guitars, and Wayne definitely gets much more into the soft and reflective kind of aspects with his vocals and his lyrics. You get the same kind of 90s rock vibe with a lot of the previous tracks, and the distorted cello sound is back, and that was really cool. And this one is just so melancholy and sad expressing the loss of love but not being able to quite let it go. The next one, number 10, is Beauty Lies Within, and this is featuring Johnny Indovina. I liked what I heard from the first piece by Johnny Indovina, but this has an entirely different feel to it. This feels almost mystic. I love the tambourine, the softer guitars, and again, feeling very much like a Spanish guitar kind of vibe and the richer drums. I'm not sure, but with my experience in the middle school band, um, that sounded a lot like timpani or a bass drum. Yeah, that's right. I was in band from fifth grade to 10th. Only reason I quit was because my band teacher sucked. Well, my new band teacher anyway. But yeah, I was a band geek deal with it. But anyway, sorry for getting off on a tangent there, but this just sounds so exotic. It finally transitions to sound more rocky, and even with this different feel from Memory of Love, this mystic vibe with Johnny's unusually lovely, rich, kind of smoky voice really fits together nicely. Again, I love how romantic this one is, and I think we can all agree with the message of this one. Real beauty is within, and we should really remember to care for one another. Number 11, Bloodless and Fragile featuring Ashton Knight. Ashton Knight returns in this one, and holy shit was it fucking good. The deep synthesizers, bass guitar, electric sitar, and other electric guitars with the tambourine and bongos really pull on your heartstrings, oh my god. This piece really takes you away, and it is so immersive. 
It also feels mystic and almost ethereal. This time Ashton focuses on the lower end of the spectrum of his vocal range and it's just as lovely as the higher end that he was using before. I swear to god, the lower end of his voice is made of the finest black velvet. It really is. I just can't sing the praises of Ashton's voice enough. It's even way up there on my list of the most beautiful singing voices I've ever heard in my whole life. And that's coming from an opera singer, okay? I could swear I heard the timpani again on this third verse kind of part, and it was amazing. I think this one is my favorite of the entire album. It really, really took my breath away. His layered vocalizations during the bridge, sung in harmony, just brought tears to my eyes. I almost couldn't take it. Oh my god. I'm getting a little emotional just thinking about it, I'm sorry. The lyrics were just so true and poignant. I can't even describe it other than just feeling understood and comforted. This one really made me lose my mind. Number 12, I Will Follow You featuring Evie Vine. This one kind of continues along the same ethereal vibe as Look Up, and Evie Vine's voice is so gentle and soulful in this one. My only real complaint was her diction wasn't very good, but that's just me. I personally hate it when people mumble when they sing, but everything else here was just wonderful. The layers of guitar, the synthesized choir, and the bongos going again uh, really make this softer and more mystic feeling. This also really reminds me of Clairvoyant with its feel, melodic progression, and instrumentation. This speaks of hope for new things, leaving an old life behind, starting a new life, fighting your fears and apprehension so that you can make your dreams come true with the one you love. It's pretty great. The next one is Heliotrope featuring Betsy Martin. Very soft guitars and bass start this one out, and I love that Betsy Martin's voice really reminds me of Stevie Nicks. Let's be real, every single goth on the planet loves Stevie Nicks. Come on. This one is nice and easy, but it gets progressively more rocky as it goes on. I can't really say too much about it other than it feels a little more ethereal in comparison to several other pieces of this album. This was just a nice, gentle, thoughtful, piece to guide us into a soft landing to conclude this album. Alright, the final track on Finding Beauty in Chaos is Finding Beauty in Chaos, and this is the title track featuring Ashton Knight. It starts with a very distorted, deep, kind of synthesized tones. It almost, it almost feels like New Age. That's the first thing that I could think of, I'm sorry. But it's very much a mood setter. It made me really anticipate what these deep, minor key tones would lead on to. Then Ashton's voice breathes into it so perfectly with his lower range. Uh, the drum programming and the guitars gradually stacking more and more layers onto the soundscape again really elevates the song. Then a real drum set takes over. Ashton's voice being slightly distorted keeps this so atmospheric. The lyrics once again are so soulful and it reminds us to stop and appreciate the beauty of the world around us, even in the darkest of times. And it motivates us to come out of a bad situation and build something beautiful and better from it. Seeing some kind of positive side and beauty in everything will make life more livable. Really gives you something to live for, the motivation to keep going. This was absolutely incredible. I didn't know what to expect with the entirety of this album, but it just took my breath away with how awesome it was. Uh, I was certainly not disappointed. I definitely got a huge 90s feel with this entire album, and it, again, the more you listen to it, the more it feels like a tribute to 90s alternative music. Yes, while it was so diverse and offered a little bit of everything, it fit together so beautifully and cohesively that none of it felt out of place. And now we move on to the second CD here, which is Beauty Re-Envisioned. Seriously, look how beautiful this is. This is just gorgeous. And I don't know if you guys noticed or if you can see, there's a lot of like outside light kind of uh, streaming in here because it's nice and beautiful and cloudy and rainy today. It makes me happy. I love living on this island. But I did my makeup kind of in the same color scheme 
as uh, the album artwork here because it's just so pretty. I love it. So, Beauty Reenvisioned offers several different remixed versions of a few songs from the original album. For example, there are two versions of Storm, uh, two different remixes of I Will Follow You, and there are remixes of Finding Beauty and Chaos, Drifting Away, The Long Goodbye, and a few others. I don't know about you guys, but I love remixes. One of my favorite albums is the Collide album Vortex, which features remixes of many of their songs. It makes things uh, more intense and dancey, in my opinion. Stuff that I can close my eyes and imagine dancing to in a club. These were mostly remixed by a lot of very talented DJs, remixers, producers, and other musicians to give a new perspective and feel to these already incredible songs. As you guys know, my taste in goth music in general tends to gravitate much more toward 90s goth rock, dark wave, industrial, EBM, and ethereal subgenres. So I looked forward to how this particular album as a whole would turn out. Now, I apologize in advance if I'm not terribly eloquent in describing electronic music. As you guys know, my background is in classical music and opera, and that's what my brain can better dissect as far as instrumentation is concerned, but I'll do the best I can here. <laughs> oh god. The first song here is 20th Century Boy, and this is an MGT remix. While the original to this song was very heavy and metal-like, this version is significantly more on the industrial side, and it's so dancey. This was just fucking awesome. The rhythm and the tempo are pretty much the same, with some slight variation in the vocals, but this feels a lot more fun and sexy. It's like a better Marilyn Manson. Yeah. Alright, number two is a remix of Man of Faith, and this is the Preacher Man mix. The song starts out with a more distorted version of the guitars used on the original. I'm not noticing much of a difference in vocals. This just feels slightly heavier and distorted than the original, but I still have no complaints. I still dig it. So the next one is a remix of Look Up done by Umugma, and this was super interesting. This felt like a slightly more electronic version of this Ascension. I really like the distortion of it, and the more focused beats and the added synthesizers, and it sounded like the very soulful voices in the bridge section really added to it. But much of the original elements of the song on the first album was very much present. Number four is Unnatural Disaster, and this is remixed by Collide. I don't know about you guys, but I fucking love Collide. So this one I was particularly excited about when I saw who remixed it and I absolutely love Collide and was looking forward to seeing what they would do with remixing this. I love the distorted guitars in the beginning and how it just erupts beautifully into a more industrial feeling masterpiece. Oh man, the synthesized choir being emphasized on this one really elevates it. I really liked the distorted guitar solo in the bridge before the rap section. I feel like this is better suited with an industrial feel because it gives more the impression of complete chaos and disaster, even more like a kind of post-apocalyptic disaster, which industrial music really excels at composing and conveying that kind of feel. So in the end, I like this better. I'm sorry, don't kill me. Of course, this is the first thing about this album that got me super excited about it as a whole. I have always found Ashton to be a magician when it comes to his acoustic music, and this was certainly no exception. Here he had a chance to really slow it down, give it a more tender, longing, and passionate expression, and really emphasize his incredible and versatile vocals. With this acoustic version, I noticed Ashton paid a bit more attention to adding harmonizing vocals, and that really added more depth to it, along with the uh, synthesizer and piano playing the guitar line from the original version in the higher octaves. I also like the rhythm of the drums on this one a bit more. I don't prefer this over the original. I honestly like them both, but they're just different. Acoustic versions of songs that I've heard by Ashton really allow his incredible voice to take center stage. Number six is a remix of I Will Follow You done by Cotton Socks. And the little static in the beginning made me very interested to see how this would differ from the previous one. The soft guitar and synthesizer made this softer and 
more meditative, if that makes any sense. The beats coming in toward the end was a nice little surprise to break up the kind of new age stillness in the rest of the song. I will say, it is really interesting to see how different musicians will reinterpret the same song. And you often find that with opera as well. I've done the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's fun. So fun. Alright, number seven is the high water mix of Drifting Away. The distorted synthesized choir really alerted me that this is going to be different. The layers of synthesized music with the bass and the guitar really made this interesting and it gave Robin Zander's voice a bit more attention than it did with the original version. This was a lot more dramatic and cinematic in my opinion. The next one is the Kitty Electro mix of Man of Faith. I was definitely hoping this one would differ more from the previous mix up that I heard and it definitely did. I like the electronic beat and I love the really deep distorted guitar and tambourine. It's definitely a bit dancier than the other mix and I like the choir here being a little more emphasized. You know, it kind of fits the theme of the song. It kind of gives the impression of a choir singing in a great cathedral. Mm. Love that sound. This next one is the Au Revoir mix of The Long Goodbye. I really enjoyed the original version of this so I was wondering how this was going to go. Lord. <laughs> That low piano was quite stunning. Oh my god. And I feel it was a bit more fitting for this song than the original rock version. It feels more like a mournful serenade in this way. The piano actually heavily reminds me of Dark Sanctuary. That's the first thing I thought of when I heard the piano. I don't know about you guys. The piano really gives Wayne Hussey a chance to emphasize how lovely his vocals really are. The smoky texture of his lower range is just beautiful, and the orchestral elements are perfect for this as well. Number 10 is the Ivad mix of I Will Follow You. This feels like a slightly more electronic version of this ascension, and it doesn't really feel too different from the original, but it's different enough to notice. I still like it, but I like the previous remix of this better. Number 11 is the Vampire mix of Storm. There's that gorgeous distorted cello again. <sighs> Love it. The higher synthesizers and those deep beats were pretty damn cool in the beginning. Many of the elements of the original were still maintained here, but the influence of the electronic distortion and the echoing of Ashton's voice made it a little more complex. So it was cool. Really cool. Number 12 is a remix of 20th Century Boy. This is definitely different from the previous mix of this song on this album. It wasn't quite as heavy, it was a little distorted compared to the full-blown industrial treatment the first version had, and there's a different vocalist on lead vocals this time. Number 13 is the Eclipse mix of I Will Follow You. I really liked the ethereal feel of the original version, but wow. The electronic industrial treatment that was given to this one just made it so sexy and tender. Yes, the original one was romantic and mystic, but I like this version a little bit better, again, because it just feels so much sexier. And last but not least, the final track is Finding Beauty in Chaos, Fall in Sway Mix. There's the deep soundscape from the original version. It just feels slightly more distorted, and it's still awesome. There seems to be a bit more harmonizing added here to add more depth. I don't really see a significant difference with this remix, not that I don't like it, it's just slightly different. As far as Beauty Re-Envisioned as a whole is concerned, it was pretty awesome. Lots of pleasant surprises hidden on this album. I still really like the original album compared to this one a lot more. I feel like more could have been done with a few of the pieces in here, but that's just me. Overall, it was still very enjoyable. It would have been interesting to see a remix of Bloodless and Fragile, but perhaps in a future album. I recommend both of these albums to anyone who loves alternative music. The first will definitely be more suited to the taste of people who love goth rock, alternative rock, hard rock, metal, and ethereal music. The second will be more suited to those who prefer industrial music. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I sincerely hope that you check out these albums and show Beauty and Chaos some support. Michael Soravalo is incredible and worked very hard on both of these albums and he deserves the support and recognition. And Michael, if you're watching, I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh god. So guys, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do have a couple more music reviews coming up and today I will be getting the Black Metals palette by Black Moon Cosmetics and as soon as I have had a chance to give it a test drive and try everything out, wear it, whatever, I definitely plan on reviewing it for you. And guys, please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, especially Instagram, please. But the reason why is because, again, you can interact with me a little bit more on Twitter and on Instagram, and you can participate in the polls that I run on both my Instagram and my Twitter. You can submit your questions for Q&A videos, all of that fun stuff, and you can keep kind of up to date on my day-to-day -day life, you know, my ridiculous nonsense and uh, seeing the music that I'm practicing and all of that fun stuff. So guys, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please show Beauty and Chaos your support. I will leave links for everything involving Beauty and Chaos down in the description below. You guys are amazing, you're wonderful, I love you, and I will see you next time. Bye.